Robert Spencer here for Jihad Watch, a program of the David Horowitz Freedom Center and for the Center for Security Policy. And here we go again. It's like having to prove that water is wet or that Hillary Clinton is corrupt, but since Barack Obama has recently yet again affirmed that jihad terrorists are twisting and hijacking the religion of peace, once again it's necessary to prove that that is not the case. Obama is right about one thing. This question does matter for what strategy the U.S. and the free world should pursue against the jihadis. That's what makes his denial and willful ignorance nothing short of catastrophic. CNN reported recently that Obama said the question of whether or not to use the term Islamic terrorist was, he said, sort of manufactured as an issue. He claimed yet again that terrorist organizations like Al-Qaeda or ISIL, as he calls it, have perverted and distorted and tried to claim the mantle of Islam for an excuse for basically barbarism and death. Warming to his point, Obama added, these are people who've killed children, killed Muslims, take sex slaves. There's no religious rationale that would justify in any way any of the things that they do. Is he right? Of course not. Okay, he said kill children. Now a hadith, an authoritative report of Muhammad's words and deeds, said that Muhammad, when asked about the women and children of the polytheists being killed during the night raid, said, they are from them. Now what does that mean, they are from them? Let's go to Sudanese Muslim cleric Muhammad al-Jazuli. He commented on this, I was very happy to learn about the relevant hadith. I felt overjoyed when I heard it. Musab ibn Juthana told the Prophet Muhammad that while the Muslims would attack the polytheists at night, women and children would be harmed. The Prophet Muhammad answered, their offspring constitute part of them, that is, they are from them. They are part of them, said our beloved Muhammad. This is not merely someone's opinion, thus killing their women and children is permitted. Now, if a Muslim cleric thinks that, is he a misunderstander of Islam while Obama understands it correctly? Not likely. Obama also said that the jihad terrorists were not Islamic because they killed Muslims. But the Quran gives permission for Muslims to be killed if they are considered to have departed from Islam. It says this, They but wish that you should reject faith as they do, and thus be on the same footing. But do not take friends from their ranks until they emigrate in the way of Allah, that is, become Muslim. But if they turn renegade, seize them and kill them wherever you find them. That's Quran chapter 4 verse 89. To emigrate in the way of Allah would involve their becoming Muslim, but if they turn renegade after that, that is, leave Islam, then they are to be killed. The Quran also says, The punishment of those who make war against Allah and his messenger and spread corruption in the land shall be to put them to death or to have them crucified or to have their hands and feet cut off on alternate sides or to banish them from the land. That's chapter 5 verse 33. The Islamic State claims that, that is the, claims that it is the caliphate, the sole authority that Muslims should obey, and that to oppose it therefore constitutes making war against Allah and his messenger. No exception is given in this Quran verse or anywhere else. Nowhere are Muslims who are considered to have made war against Allah and his messenger exempted from this death penalty. Obama said the jihadis were not Islamic because they take sex slaves. Yet the seizure of infidel girls and their use as sex slaves is sanctioned in the Quran. According to Islamic law, Muslim men can take captives of the right hand. The Quran says, O Prophet, lo, we have made lawful to you your wives to whom you have paid their dowries and those whom your right hand possesses of those whom Allah has given you as spoils of war. That's chapter 33, verse 50. Chapter 4, verse 3 and chapter 4, verse 24 extend this privilege to Muslim men in general. The Quran says that a man may have sex with his wives and with these slave girls. The believers must win through those who humble themselves in their prayers, who avoid vain talk, who are active in deeds of charity, who abstain from sex except with those joined to them in the marriage bond or whom their right hands possess, for they are free from blame. That's Quran chapter 23 verses 1 to 6. Obama also said, but what I have been careful about when I describe these issues is to make sure that we do not lump these murderers into the billion Muslims that exist around the world. Calling them Islamic terrorists wouldn't do that. Any more than referring to American senators means that all Americans are senators. Calling them what they are simply opens the door for us to understand what they're all about and how best to counter them. 
Clinging determinedly to his fantasies, however, Obama added, if you had an organization that was going around killing and blowing people up and said, we're on the vanguard of Christianity, as a Christian, I'm not going to let them claim my religion and say, you're killing for Christ. I would say, that's ridiculous. Sure. But if this group was basing its actions on some twisted interpretation of Christian scripture, law enforcement and intelligence officials would be derelict in their duty if they didn't study that interpretation, even if they understood it was wrong, in order to understand the motives and goals of the enemy and develop effective ways to defeat them. Yet that is exactly what Obama has forbidden. On October 19, 2011, Farhana Khera of Muslim Advocates wrote a letter to John Brennan, who is then the Homeland Security Czar and is now, of course, the head of the CIA. The letter was signed not just by Khera, but by the leaders of virtually all the significant Islamic groups in the United States, 57 Muslim, Arab, and South Asian organizations, many with ties to Hamas and the Muslim Brotherhood, including the Council on American Islamic Relations, the Islamic Society of North America, the Muslim American Society, the Islamic Circle of North America, Islamic Relief USA, and the Muslim Public Affairs Council. The letter denounced what it characterized as U.S. government agencies' use of biased, false, and highly offensive training materials about Muslims and Islam, and demanded that all mention of Islam and Jihad be removed from counter-terror training materials. Brennan immediately complied. So since then, it has been administration policy to ignore and deny the motivating ideology of Jihad terror. Now that's a recipe for defeat and disaster. You cannot defeat an enemy you don't understand. Under Barack Obama, refusing to understand the enemy is official U.S. government policy. I'm Robert Spencer.